Welcome to Rock Solid Productions, where in this episode, we are going to replace and clean a really disgusting Xbox One S's HDMI port. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Now, if this is your first time to the channel before we get into today's episode, I just wanna take a second and thank you for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here today. I really do appreciate it. If you like what you see here, check out some of the other videos that we have here on the channel, including other videos showing mods, repairs, servicing, how to clean your old cartridges, all here on the channel. And if you really enjoy the content that we bring you, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, that way you are alerted every time we come out with new content. I would really appreciate a thumbs up. What I wanna know from you here today, I have never really been a fan of the Xbox, primarily because of the controller. Going back to the original Duke, which I jokingly call the puke because it was so massive, I want to know from you, what's your favorite Xbox controller? And I'm not just talking color variants, but between the original Xbox Duke controller, the S controller, the 360, the original Xbox One controller, some of the later ones, and now on the Series S and X, what are your favorite controllers for the Xbox Series? So recently I had a chance to pick up this guy here, and I'm being very careful about picking it up, and there's a reason why I'll tell you about it here in a second. So on our local Facebook marketplace, I saw a listing for an Xbox One S for 50 bucks. I'm like, you know what? It's not a bad deal. No controllers, no HDMI cable, which I'm okay with that. And the person who was listing it said that it needed the HDMI port replaced. Did a quick search on YouTube and whatnot. I'm like, I can do that. Made her an offer, she accepted the offer, and this is now mine. Now, one of the bummers about it you can see it's pretty gross and beat up and everything. There were cockroaches in it. Like when I picked it up and I rattled it around, I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound good. And having run, and I'm gonna wash my hands now after holding this, um, having run a Radio Shack for many years, I had people bring stuff in that was cockroach infested. It was disgusting. I would not send those into our service center for repair because it would have just led to an infestation and caused other people's electronics to need to be cleaned, serviced, decockroached, really. So what I'm gonna do on this one here is not only am I gonna replace the HDMI port on it, I'm also gonna walk you through the steps that I'm going to take to clean up all the components inside to make sure that we kill all the cockroaches that may have been left in there. There aren't any in there, um, but any of the eggs and whatnot that may have been left behind, any of their dander, just remove it all. Now, one of the biggest things that I have done just to start off with is this has been sitting out in my garage where it has been below freezing for over two weeks at this point. That's one of the biggest tips that uh, those who are involved in eliminating pests recommend for bugs is put it outside. The cold will kill them. That's one of the reasons why you put or why the, the roaches try to get into electronics like this. They like the heat. They like the warmth. Putting them out in the cold, well, that reverses that. So we're gonna hit the bench. We have some precautions that we are taking. Now, one of the things, again, I'm gonna wash my hands very frequently throughout this whole thing. Um, if you are not comfortable with what I'm showing you here as far as handling and everything, make sure to use rubber gloves when you are going through and cleaning out a system like this. It, that's the best way to really protect your hands. I'm just gonna do a whole lot of soap and water and some uh, hydrogen peroxide and some isopropyl alcohol and other stuff that I'm going to use to get inside and get this deroached. Let's get started. So here it is and you can see like all the grime and everything on this side here of the case. Now there's a couple things that you could do to clean this with. I actually have a uh, hydrogen peroxide multi-surface disinfecting spray. I'm going to just spray on a rag and see how that does here. I mean you can already see that it's picking crap up off of here. So what I may end up doing is just soaking this in that just to make sure, I mean, there you can see the scuff marks there are already coming off. Um, I will probably soak this in a bath of that just to make extra sure that all this, just this disgusting. And these are blue paper towels, so you know it's, you know, it doesn't show as, as well as the black ones do. Now, I've already 
opened up the bottom of this case just because with the rattling I wanted to see and I don't know if you heard it there or not I wanted to see if I was dealing with roaches or not um, there aren't any screws that keep the bottom on it's basically just a pressure fit that if you have like they call them spudgers and that's what this guy here is it's called a spudger you can basically get around and lift between the panels to kind of release it now I have somewhat put this back on just for the purposes of this video but I have had this completely off there we go now the inside of this was covered in roach guts and I've already sprayed this out I'll probably hit it again quite honestly just to be on the safe side now when this came out I also had another piece that came out and I think I'm gonna actually have to order a replacement online I think this is the eject button right here that popped out. It almost looks like it's broken off right there. So once we get inside, I'll know a little bit better. Um, but looking around the edges here, we can see all the roach droppings and whatnot. Now, inside of an Xbox, unlike Nintendo, they don't use security bits. They actually use a combination of um, uh, Torx bits. I think it's a number 10. So we are going to load this up in our speed bit. And also pay close attention, you have green anodized ones, you have silver ones. Which ones go back where when we are all done? This is so gross. And again, if you wanna wear gloves while doing something like this, go for it. I mean, this is your health and safety that we're talking about here. Uh, definitely no one would, would say bad otherwise if you did that. In fact, I'm going to use my tweezers to get these out to limit my contact as much as possible. And everything on my bench will be wiped down when I am done with this, just to make sure that I'm not spreading roach guts. Okay, green ones are out. I'm going to actually take, I'm going to put them over here. Yes, again, I am touching them. I'll wash my hands in a minute. I was actually surprised to see torque screws in here. That's more of a European thing than an American. Microsoft loves to use a lot of screws, it seems. These are actually T6 screws, not, uh, not Allen wrench. I hate using these things, by the way. These things are terrible. All right, with that, all of our screws are out of the bottom shroud, I believe. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can't just flip it over if it'll come out. Looks like the USB port was also smashed to hell. I mean, you can see all the crap that's coming out already. So gross. There we go. Oh, fudge. Oh, look at that. And I hate swearing on this channel, but man, look at that. Oh, God. What the hell, people? That's so disgusting. So first and foremost, I'm taking this and it's gonna go in our pan here that we have and this is gonna get decontaminated itself. Look at all the roach guts and shit on there. Again, I apologize for the language. I, I don't like swearing on here, but man, this is so, how do you let this happen? That's gonna go in the same tray. Yeah, that's our little friend right there. So gross. Oh, I'm so disgusted right now. Like, and I don't get creeped out by bugs, but this is just, it's gross. So the electrical components, I'm actually going to put in a bath of electric contact cleaner. Um, so it's something that is safe to use on electrical components. So that's gonna get pulled out and washed separately. I've got a separate tray for that. I hope that you are enjoying this because I am not. And this is a hydrogen peroxide based cleaner here. I just wanted to be able to touch some of the stuff and not have frickin' roach. Look at that. Oh, oh! I didn't know. The hell you didn't. There's no way. Look at that. There's no way that you can have this in your house and not know that you have a roach problem. I'm gonna disconnect the hard drive here. Same thing here. We're gonna spray this down. Spray that down. I so don't even want to touch this thing right now. Oh, I mean, you can see inside the system just all the guts and crap laying out here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this outside real quick and I'm blowing it out just to get as much crap out of here as I can. Okay, so figured it out on this side right here. There are two clips that hold the fan into place right there and there. We're gonna just take our X-Acto knife and prop those up one by one. All right, that's removed. So what we're gonna do at this point is basically take electronic component cleaner and douse the bejesus out of this board, scrub it clean multiple times. I mean, like if you look down in here, you can see all the bug guts and whatnot that's sitting on the motherboard. You can see the crap that's fallen out. Um, we are gonna soak everything thoroughly right now and try to kill anything that may be hanging out. So it's been a few days since we've given the motherboard its bath here, and what I use to clean it are two electronic component cleaners. I used CRC QD electronic cleaner, and I used Dynamite Magnum Force. Why did I use these two? First of all, I know that they would kill any leftover eggs and whatnot that would have been on the board, so that's crucial to this. The other thing, both of them are safe to use on plastic. So, you know, any of these housings and whatnot that would have had components on it, even the back sides of those ports, these would not have chemically melted them. So they're safe to use. Anytime you're using this kind of a solvent, make sure you're also doing that uh, in a well ventilated area to make sure you don't make yourself sick. Um, I do have the new HDMI port here. Now the issue that we're dealing with is with this HDMI port right here. Now, as you can see, the the spring tensioner essentially has split or spread apart, and we've got a gap right here. If you look at the one next to it, no gap. So technically, I could probably squeeze this back together, uh, but that's not what we're here to do. I'm going to actually replace this. Before we do so, what we're gonna do is we're going to introduce some new solder into these pads right here, and on the flip side, to those pads right there waiting for our soldering iron to warm up. And I'm just gonna use a touch of no flux or no clean solder flux. I love the way this iron just heats up like now. All right, there's that one. And all we're doing is we're introducing new solder so it's easier to um, basically remove here in a moment. All right, so one of the things I've done here is I've pulled off the backdrop material because quite honestly, that's plastic and I don't want it to melt. We are going to heat the backside of the board up here and then slowly introduce a little bit of pressure here to pull this off. We don't want to use too much because simply we don't want to pull the traces off the board. I mean, this is, this is the part in this where we could quite honestly ruin this forever. So what we have is we have a tweezers here and we do have a hot air rework station provided to the channel for use for this by Live Action Games. Thanks to Adrian for that. All right, we're slowly working our heat up to 450 degrees. And you wanna keep moving it so that way you're not putting too much heat in one spot. There we see that solder is already hot. And just like that, our old uh, HDMI port is out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this all cool down a little bit before we clean up the pads and everything and get ready to install the new one. So now we're gonna come in and just clean this up a little bit. And it looks like we may have a couple of uh, small bridges in here which we're gonna go ahead and clean up real quick. There's some no clean solder flux. And we're gonna use, for this, because it's such delicate work, we're gonna actually use some soldering braid or desoldering braid actually. look pretty good. One last little final step we're gonna do is I'm gonna introduce a little bit more solder right here and we're gonna break out the desoldering iron in a moment just to make sure that we have clear sockets here. So there's a little bit one, a little bit two, a little bit three, a little bit four. So we got four blobs of solder on there, right? Now we're gonna break out the desoldering iron so we can clear those out. Again, I'm gonna put just some no clean solder flux on here. Just helps with getting that solder joint done. I'm gonna tin my desoldering iron. I'm gonna come in here. I apologize, my hand is probably gonna be in the way. There's one. Try to do it left handed. There's two. 
There's three. There's four. Look how clean those through holes are now. I'll, I'll give you a closer look in a second. Uh, that worked beautifully and now I can shut this down. I don't need it anymore for this job. That's actually worked perfectly. I, I love how that worked. All right, folks, we are definitely getting there. I'm gonna just, again, clean that with a little bit of uh, Dynamite Magnum Force. You can use isopropyl alcohol, works just fine as well. I'll hit the back side right away. Oh, sorry, let my inner Voltar slip out there. Thank you, Daddy. Now we're ready to mount and place our new HDMI port. Looks a lot like the old one, just not all busted and crap. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually going to tack down this back side here. I'm gonna introduce just a little bit of no clean. And this is and this is literally just to hold it in place while I do the rest of the work here in a moment. That one's down. And that one's down. Now this I am going to have to do off camera simply because I need to really see in here. But we're gonna use a drag technique essentially to fill in the gaps here between the pads on the HDMI connector and the board. It's just really a small area that we're looking at and I need to be able to see. So we'll be back here in just a second. So there we have all of the joints made. Uh, one of the things that took me a little bit just to make sure was that we did not have any uh, solder bridges or anything like that. I did get a couple and for that I just used a little bit of braid to peel that off. But overall this looks pretty good. We're gonna solder the other two legs on the board and then get things back together. So again, we're gonna be working right here. So we're just gonna put a drop and a drop and this should be a pretty easy final soldering touch here. A boop and a boop. And a boop. That one was actually already pretty good. So, and again, looking here, we don't have any bridges. We can turn off our soldering iron. We are done with it for this project. And now it is time to put everything back together. All right, so let's start this reassembly process. We're gonna put the fan back on. Come forward just a little bit. There we go, because you got a line. There's a tab here that needs to line up with the outside of the heat sink in addition to the other four tabs that clip it into place. There we go. And yes, I am still finding bits of cockroach guts and whatnot in here. I just sprayed it out again with some contact cleaner. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna reinsert it back into the bottom case shroud. And it goes this way. And then we have two boards we have to reconnect. I believe that was the smaller one. And it was. So I'll get that going here in a second. Now one thing I do wanna show you is I did just pick up this guy here. So this has like everything you could want for repairing games. It's got Allen wrenches, it has security bits, it even has um, tri-wings. So eight bucks at, Menard, or at uh, Walmart. The only bummer is it is not a quarter inch drive, so I can't use these bits in my Hitachi, for example. Now don't go too tight on these screws, just snug them down. You don't need to, to go gonzo on them or anything. And our other board I think went right across the back right here. Now I did take and use some Bright Boy on this metal housing here and on other metal components just to try to get as much of the um, dander and everything like that off of it. It made a huge difference. It's the disk drive. And that gets plugged in right there. Sets there. All right, next up we're gonna connect the hard drive, which actually I think goes this way. And then reconnect that power supply, that goes in right about there. And then we need to put the power supply back in. Actually, power supply needs to go first because there's a tab right there that the hard drive keys into, so. All right, so rethinking this, we're gonna lift that up, bring that down. 
those two key together. That plugs in. There we go with that. It just, it's striking how much of this just kind of is there versus being really held in at this point. And there's one more standoff that goes here. Okay, now we are gonna put the top shroud back on. And yes, you can still see some of the remnants of the guts on there and everything, but trust me, this is a hell of a lot better than what it had been. So at this point, we're gonna flip the system over. We're gonna come in here and we'll have to get our screws back reinstalled. I believe these were the, uh, the button head styles here. Now the reason why I'm doing this by hand is I want to make sure my alignment on everything is as it should be. Also doing a kind of star pattern too, just to center everything up. I'll tell you my hands right now feel so gross, I want to wash them so badly. Alright, so this will finish attaching the heatsink screws. So at this point we're nearing the end and we can put the top of the case back on. Look how much better that looks versus what we started out with. So much better. Um, we're gonna take and move the system. We're going to lower it in carefully, as carefully as we can. All right, it's coming together. Throw our screws in here. Yes, now I'm going into composite, so that's as it should be. So we got that one in. This side is still being. There we go. A little bit. There we go. Now we got it seated there. Not gonna lie, I'm getting kind of excited here to get this thing up and running. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm doing this by hand. Part of it is I wanna feel the alignment as everything goes in. I also wanna just make sure I'm not stripping anything out. You know, this one I am gonna do with the Hitachi just to speed this up. All right, those are all on. I gotta tighten this one back down just a little bit. There we go. I actually come through and tighten these all by hand. It is almost that time. We've gotta do two more things. So we've got the bottom was just roach infest and I have cleaned that out. But we've got to get this little guy back in here. And I did confirm that it did break there, but it's good enough. I might hit it with a, just a dab of CA or RC glue right there just to keep it together. But it's basically just part of a spring is what it looks like. So we are going to put the bottom back on. Hoping this should be just a, you know, line them up and drop them in. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is one deroached, repaired Xbox One S. Now let's see, does it work? All right, it is the moment of truth. Did I repair it or did I ruin it even more? Uh, I think you hit the X, isn't it? It's good sound. Let's see how we have everything going through our capture card. It switched. We managed to fix it, very cool. I am very excited about this. Now I am gonna have to go ahead and, and basically do a, a complete dump of the system and do a system refresh on here before I can get to playing it. But uh, let's see here too if our Series S and X controller connects here in just a moment as it's going through and doing its stuff. Let me know what you thought of this repair because this was probably the most in-depth I have ever had to go through. Um, I've never dealt with like the cockroach issue. It was so disgusting. And I'm not easily grossed out by like bugs and insects and stuff like that. But the cockroach dander and crap that I saw in this thing, it was really, really gross. So Megan is the name of the person I bought it off of. Let's see what we have going on here. Need to connect to the internet. This isn't pairing. I wonder if there's a firmware update that I needed. Let's try another controller here real quick. And that worked just fine right there. So let's see if we can go down to settings. It's one of the things I hate about the Xbox. I hit B and it takes me back. It's where A should be. Well, for some reason it's not allowing me to connect to my Shock Blue controller, which is quite weird, but it did connect to my original Xbox One controller. So 
And we'll see what happens there. I'll do a device refresh and everything on here. But let me know what you think of this sort of a, uh, a system restore. This was really something quite different and unique for me. Um, now I have an Xbox One S, less than 50 bucks. The part cost me about six or seven dollars overall. Um, a very time consuming swap on here and something that there's still one additional repair I need to make to it. The front USB port is all narfed up. I do have to swap that out too. Not something I would probably recommend for the faint of heart because this was a pain to go through. Um, it did take me a little bit too to make sure that I didn't have any um, you know, solder joints that were uh, crossed and bridged and whatnot going through on the new HDMI port. And having that uh, hot air rework station, Adrian at Live Action Games, thanks for so much for the loan of that. I'm probably gonna have to pick up one of those for myself. Not something that I will probably offer as a service for what I do, uh, but something that if you do have an HDMI port that goes bad on an Xbox One S, you can easily-ish swap it out if you have the right accessories. Now, if you do have any other comments or questions about anything that I've shown you here today, as always, feel free to leave it down below in the comment section. You can also go ahead and send me an email at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. Now, if you are looking for additional accessories, supplies, goodies for modern or retro gaming, do me a favor, head on over to castlemaniagames.com. One of the coolest things is he has recently added first run video games on his site. So he's got Switch, PS4, Xbox One. I have not noticed yet if he's got PS5, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see him very soon. The cool thing, when you order stuff through Ryan, you earn Castle Cash. It's his rewards program where basically the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and it's just like cash. And on most items on the site, games are exempt from this, systems, a few other things. But if you use promo code ROCKSOLID10, you can save up to 10% off of most items on the website. Um, I'm glad to have a 1S now. Uh, this is one of those things. You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? We're going to grab a Blu-ray disc. And actually, this is an Ultra Blu-ray 4K. We're going to throw it in, and we're just going to see if it reads. Let's see what happens. I'm excited. Perfectly. The disk drive even works great. So um, I'm excited. We now have an Ultra 4K Blu-ray player up in the game room in addition to an Xbox One S, in addition to our original Xbox One, which quite frankly, I was never very impressed with. I thought it was slow and laggy and just, yeah, did not like that system a whole lot. But this one here, it's gonna take up less space and it's cockroach free. I am Gary, this has been Rock Solid Productions, and if you wanna check out some more of our videos, they're coming out right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rock Solid Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel. And you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.